want to know something, if you want the answer to a question that kind of comes to your mind, where do you go? And I know the answer for most people. You go to your phone. You carry a powerful computer in your phone or in your pocket or in your purse. You pull it out and you go, you could be listening to a sermon that Kevin's preaching and he says something, you go, wait a minute. And you do a little fact check in the middle of a sermon, right? I mean, you can get a lot of answers. But when I was growing up and as a young adult, that wasn't what I did. Because, to age myself, the internet didn't exist initially and we didn't have that kind of accessibility. So get, now brace yourself for this. Back when I was younger and you had a question about something, generally where you went was to, and brace yourself, another human being. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you'd go talk to a person, and you'd ask them a question. And, and everyone uh, who's relating with me right now, because they, they lived in that world at that time, knows that, you, that there was always a couple of people you knew, that, or maybe you were that person, but that had all the answers. They just knew a lot of stuff. My dad was one of those people. I could go to my dad with a question about almost anything. And he would give me clear answers and way more information than I wanted. <laughs> but he would give me detailed answers. I remember one time I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I'm thinking about, I was uh, driving, I was thinking about getting a car, a certain kind of car. And I said, you know much about this make of car? And here's how he responded. Well, he said, let's see, the last time Consu Consumer Reports did a study was four, I think it was four years ago in June. And, and he gives me this rundown on all the details of this car. So I had to go, I, I went and checked, and he was right. It was four years before, in June, they'd gone, and, and I'm looking at the details, I'm like, my dad read voraciously and remembered just detail after detail. So I could go to my dad and I could ask him a question and trust that he had a good answer, even though sometimes I would double check to make sure, because he seemed like, I'm just like, how can somebody know so much? Uh, but he did. And, and as a matter of fact, one time, um, I remember somebody saying to my dad, I think it was one of my sisters, said, um, are there things you don't know about? And he said, oh, absolutely. And she said, what? And he said, stuff I find uninteresting. <laughs> he says, like, I don't know much about modern rock music. He says, but I don't care. Now, ask him about classical music, and he can tell you everything you want to know, right? If you want, if you, there was a time when you said, if I want to have an answer to a question, I knew who to go to. Well, let me ask you this. Who do you go to if you want to understand more about prayer? The answer is Jesus. I can encourage you, initially, don't go to this, because you'll get about a million answers, and some are going to be crazy, and so if you want to learn about prayer, you do exactly what we're doing right now. You open up this book. As a matter of fact, if you have your Bible with you, if you have your Bible app open, go to John chapter 17, because in John chapter 17 is the biggest prayer, the longest prayer that we have recorded of Jesus, except for the first beginning of the first verse introducing the prayer. The entire chapter is Jesus praying. So if you want to learn to pray, go to the master prayer. His name was Jesus. And so as you read John 17, what you discover is he begins in the first five verses of praying prayers of praise to the Father. He glorifies the Father. And we look at Jesus, we learn from Jesus, and we say, God, I need to learn to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, to pray like Jesus prayed, and to glorify the Father. And then in verses 6 through 19... Jesus continues praying, and in verses 6 through 19, if you're a Christian, if you've come to the cross and received Jesus, verses 6 to 19 of John 17 is Jesus praying for you. He's praying for his disciples, his disciples then, but all of his disciples through time. So when you read that middle part of, of John 17, you hear Jesus praying for his followers, for his disciples, for us, and in doing that, he teaches us how to pray for others. We looked last week at 10 different ways we can pray for other Christians out of just by learning from the prayer of Jesus in John 17. But then Jesus continues on in verse 20 of John 17. And now his prayer gets huge. Because Jesus prays for the world. He prays for the whole world. He, here's what Jesus prays for. He says, now, Father, I'm going to pray for all those who will come to faith in me through my disciples. He prays for the world that we're called to go and share his love with. He prays for all the lost sheep because Jesus is the good shepherd and his heart longs for lost sheep to come home. His heart longs for people to come to know him and walk with him and follow him. So we have to understand that, that if we're going to join Jesus in praying for the world, that praying for the world is a big prayer. When you pray for the world, you are praying a big prayer. When you're praying for all those who don't yet know Jesus in this world, that's a massive prayer. Over seven and a half billion people in the world. It's hard for our minds even to comprehend that number, but God knows every one of them by name. Even the forgotten and nameless ones, he knows and he loves. There's over 7,000 languages spoken in the world. 
And then that 1040 window that you saw in the opening video, and that part of the world, the 1040 window, you'll see it up here, there's an estimated 5,500 people groups that for the most part have not heard the message of Jesus. Well, in our world, we can sit here and go, well, everybody's heard about Jesus. No. There's places that less than 1% of people are followers of Jesus and where many, many people have never heard the name of Jesus. It's because there's a place, a place in the world like that so far from us, and yet the way our world is now so close to us, if we'll let our hearts beat with the heart of Jesus, that during the, right in the middle of COVID, I felt led to encourage all of you that we were going to start a new partnership of mission, of global outreach, in that part of the world, in some of those challenging different places of the world to reach. And I, some of you won't even remember this because you might have missed that. I just mentioned it one Sunday. And I showed the 1040 window, I talked about it, and I said, listen, when we get through COVID, and right now in other parts of the world, there's still lots of challenges, but it's getting to the point where we're going to start planning, partnering with World Mission, and we're going to be bringing treasures, and what treasures are are these little audio Bibles, like the size of a, a, a deck of playing cards, this little unit, and it's a solar-powered audio with the entire Bible, solar power, so the batteries never run out, you just lay out in the sun, it recharges, turn it over, you play it, and it plays the, the word of God from beginning to end in the language of those people. And we're going to partner with people, and so I mentioned this, and I, I said, listen, we're going to try to do this, we're going to try to bring hundreds of these treasures, we're going to partner with somebody on the ground there, this could be our partner, maybe eventually we'll get to do like a water project where we do water, bring the Bible, and partner with somebody there. And I'm hoping in the next year or so to even to have a couple people from here be able to go and represent us and get to know the folks in that part of the world where we're partnering. So I mentioned this on one Sunday, and I knew we needed about $25,000 to get the initial round of Bibles ready to go, the audio Bibles. And without ever saying another word about it, we have over 13,000 of that that's come in just because people remember that and said, oh, I want to give something. That blew my mind. I mentioned that to somebody yesterday. I said, all we need is another 12,000. And, and this guy said, well, I'll cover six of it if the congregation can cover the other six. And I said, that's not going to be a problem. I know this church. And so we're, we're in this part, and, and then this is kind of cool. The president and CEO of World Mission will be coming after the first of the year and preaching here at Shoreline as we're getting ready to launch into this new mission. So we got the president and CEO. I've got him on the preaching schedule as I'm planning that out for 2020. I've got a date. He's going to come and preach and cast a vision for us to be part of global missions in a continued and growing manner. And so, so there's, there's so many needs and so much going on in this world. And as we begin to think about this prayer, so Jesus is praying for all the people who will come to know him, all the people he wants to know him, that will come to know him through our lives, through our witness, through our ministry, through his disciples. So here's my question for you. Well, a statement and then a question. Here's a statement. Jesus cared about lost sheep, and he still does. Jesus cares about people that have not come home to him yet. He's the good shepherd, and anyone who doesn't yet put faith in him, he sees them as a lost sheep he wants to bring home. So the question is, who is one lost sheep that Jesus is seeking and has invited you to join him along the way? And I want you to think about that for a minute. Who's one person that you know and love and care about? It could be a child, a sibling, a parent, family member, a neighbor, a friend at school, a friend at work, somebody in a social setting. But you know that they don't know that God loves them and that Jesus died for them and that God's heart is open to them. They don't know that yet. And Jesus, the good shepherd, sees them as a lost sheep who is one person that Jesus is seeking after, and he's invited you to partner with him. My dad was on my list of people that were still far from Jesus for over 40 years before he put his faith in Jesus. And now I can say now, this is my first Father's Day without my dad here, but I know my dad is with Jesus. So I'm okay, because I know I'll see him again. Who's your one or two lost sheep. And I just want you to quiet your heart for a minute and think about that person or those people because you know God's put you in their life and the good shepherd's seeking them but he's, he said to you, you get to be part of my plan to share my love with them, to show them I care about them. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, you say, I'm online or I'm here on campus and I haven't put my faith in Jesus yet, then I would suggest that you just look and say that God, maybe today I would say, is it me? Maybe I'm a lost sheep. And Jesus, if your arms are open, if you love me, if you would be my good shepherd and lead my life and wash me clean, then I want to be open to you. Maybe it's you that you're thinking about today or it's somebody you love and care about. And Jesus, as we listen to your prayer, as we learn from your prayer today, will you grow our hearts and our lifestyles of sharing your love with people that don't yet know you, that we can fulfill all you've called us to do and be 
We pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Well, I want to ask you to listen to this prayer. It won't be on the screen. If you have your Bible open, you can follow along. If you have your Bible app open, you can follow along. But I want you just to hear the heart of Jesus because this is his prayer for people who don't yet know him. So listen to how it begins in verse 20. He's just been praying about his disciples. So he starts by saying, my prayer is not for them alone. It's not just for people who believe in Jesus. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. He's talking about us sharing the message of his love, his grace, his truth, and people will come to know Jesus through our lives. And all of, the, all of them may be one, that the world actually could become one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. He's praying for the world. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. Listen to this. So that they may be brought to complete unity. How's that going in our world right now? Right? But that's the heart of Jesus. That's the desire of Jesus. They may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus prays that the God, God the Father, the world would know, Father, that you, that you love them like you love me. Jesus says the world would know that, that, that the Father in heaven loves the lost just as much as he loves Jesus. That's mind-boggling. Verse 24, he keeps praying, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. Do you hear Jesus' heart? He wants every lost person to be in heaven with him one day. And to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them. Jesus is making the Father known to the world and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them. And listen to this, the final part of the prayer. And Jesus prays, and that I myself may be in them. Do you hear the heart of Jesus? The lost sheep that you're thinking about right now, that son or daughter, that brother or sister, that dad or mom, that neighbor or friend, Jesus says, I want to dwell in their heart and their life. As much as I loved my dad and prayed for him for 40 years to know Jesus, I always knew that Jesus loved my dad more than I did because he died for him. As much as you love the person, that lost sheep that Jesus is searching and seeking after, as much as you love that person, Jesus loves them more. And doesn't that inspire your heart to know the love of God and the grace of Jesus? So what we're, what we're invited to do is to pray with Jesus and to live for Jesus in a way that will show the world the way to Jesus. We can pray and we can live in ways, and, it's, and there's this just sort of this divine adventure that we get to go with Jesus who's seeking after lost sheep. We can't find them. We can't save them. That's Jesus' job. But we get to go with him and be part of it. We get to pray and partner with God. So here's, here's the, the question we're going to be asking, and I'm going to give you five answers right out of the prayer of Jesus. Here's the question. How can I pray and partner in the adventure? How do I pray and partner with Jesus in this adventure of sharing his grace with the world? And there's five answers we find in this passage. So here's number one. We need to know the message of the gospel and find opportunities to share this good news. We need to know the message of the gospel. John 17, 20, Jesus prays these words. He prays, my, father's, my, my prayer is not for them alone, not for the disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's the world. Jesus is praying for, already praying for people who don't yet know him, that they will know him. So here's the question. This is an important question. What would you say if someone came to you and asked, how do I become a Christian? Somebody, somebody, just, somebody you know, somebody that knows you, they, they're like, they're like oh, yeah, you go, to, you go to church, you're, you're kind of religious and stuff. You're, you know, they, they don't know what, how it all works. They go, you're, you're one of those Christians, right? And they said to you, you know, hey, my life's really messed up. I'm hurting right now, and I'm wondering, how do, how do I become a Christian? What would you say? Do a Google search? No. <laughs> Let me go get a pastor? No. You can just tell them the simple story of Jesus. On your way in, you got a little bookmark. If you didn't, there's some on the table on the, on the way out. You can grab one of those. If you're online and your Sunday email we sent you has a link to an, a, a digital version of that, you can just take that and put that in your phone and have that handy. But it's, that's just a simple tool. This is, I, I've tried to take all that I've learned over 40 years of being a Christian 
about the message of Jesus and just distill it into the simplest possible way that people can remember it really easily. So if somebody says to you, how do I become a Christian? You can just go, okay, I gotta remember my gospel, go, go. Gospel means good news and go, 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 it's just G-O-G-O. And here's what it is. It says, the first G, God's love. We tell people about God's love. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, John 3.16 says. First John says, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. When you talk about the gospel of the good news of Jesus, you always begin with the love of God. Why? Because God begins with his love. The Bible doesn't say, for God so hated the world, or God was so angry with the world. It says, God so loved the world. God knew we were under judgment. God knew we were in trouble, but he loved us. So we share with people the love of God. That's the, the gospel, the G, God's love. Then the first O, you just remember this, our problem. Our problem. The Bible calls it sin. We think things we shouldn't think. We say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. We get lazy and don't do good things we should do. All those things are sin. And the Bible says those sins separate us from God. So all of us have sinned. All of us are separate from God. We have a problem. God loves us, but we're separate from him. And God, doesn't just, God just can't say, hey, just come on into heaven the way you are. It'd be like somebody just got brand new carpet. I mean, just brand new, like, kind, of, kind of like a light, light tan, beautiful carpet. And somebody comes walking up to their door and they're wearing like hiking boots that are not just with mud on the bottom. I mean, it's that sticky mud that's all over everything. They don't just say, come on in, walk across the carpet. I don't mind. I mean, it's, it'd be like, can you just take the boots off before you come in? <laughs> Anyone would do that. We can't track sin into heaven because all of a sudden heaven becomes hell. So God says, we got to clear that off. we got to deal with it. God's love, our problem is sin, and then there's God's solution. What, what, what washes away our sin? Jesus. He died on the cross. He bore our sins, took our shame, took our pain, took our punishment, and he knew your name. And he knew the names of the lost sheep you know that he's still searching after. He knows every name. And he died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. And then he rose again from the dead. The solution to our sin problem is Jesus. So God's love, our problem, God's solution, Jesus. Then what's last? The last, oh, our response. And it's one word, faith. We put our faith in Jesus. We put our trust in Jesus. We accept his forgiveness for our wrongs. We ask him to be the leader of our life, to take our hand and lead us all through our life and forever. And there's people say, wait, wait the, the, that's, that's it? It's that simple? It is. It is. When I prayed to receive Jesus, I was 15 years old. I grew up in an atheistic home. I, I had never held or read a Bible. I don't know if I did. I, I think that my, probably my first prayer ever was my prayer to receive Jesus. So I didn't have all the answers. I'll tell you that. I think my first prayer was basically, basically something like this. God, I'm not sure if you're real. And Jesus, I don't even know if the stuff about the cross is true, but if you died on the cross... And if you can wash away all my wrongs, and if you love me and you want my life, you can have me. You go, that's not a very deep prayer. My life has never been the same. From that moment, my sins were washed away, and God moved into me by his spirit, and I've never been the same. Have I stumbled and messed up along the way? You better believe it. But I've never been the same. Transformed. You gotta know that message you got to be ready to share that message. you got to pray for opportunities to let other people know. So, so how, how, do, how do we partner with God in this adventure? We know the message of Jesus. Get that locked in your heart. Take that gospel go-go thing and don't just you know, put it in your phone or in your wallet or, or, or in your purse or whatever, but put it in your heart and know that simple truth of God's good news. How can we pray and partner in the adventure? Here's the second thing we learn from the prayer of Jesus. By asking God to bring unity and harmony in the world through the gospel. We just pray, God, God, please, like Jesus prayed, bring unity and harmony in this world. Bring unity and harmony in my home, in my life, in our church, and through the work of Jesus to the world. Look at John 17, 21, as Jesus continues to pray. He prays, listen, listen to this unity prayer, that all of them may be one. That's unity. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, Trinitarian unity. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you, sent, you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. That's his prayer for unity of people. 
I in them and you in me, listen to this, so that they may be brought to complete unity. That's the heart of Jesus. We live in a very polarized, non-unified time. And in the last 15 months, I've had more people tell me, Pastor Kevin, you should preach on this. Pastor Kevin, you should preach. Not like my getting ready for 2022 preaching. Like, here, this is what's happening in the world. This is what the news cycle is saying. This is the hot issue. So, Pastor Kevin, go after it. Because if we can just hammer home, you know, these things and get it, you know, kind of get, get people to agree with us, then the world will be united. Guess what? It ain't working. It's not working. There's one thing that will bring unity in a home. The presence and the power of Jesus. There's one thing that will be unity in a local church, and churches can be very divided. It's the presence and the power of Jesus. There's one thing that will bring unity in our world. It's revival and the presence and the power of Jesus. Now, here's the reality. Every issue that people bring up, all of them are things that end up in the, are in the Bible, and, we'll, and I'll preach, and I'll, I'm not afraid to preach about anything. But, but we're not going to keep changing with a news cycle. We're going to focus on Jesus, and then we're going to preach about Jesus, then we're going to learn about Jesus, then we're going to understand that Jesus brings unity and Jesus changes lives, and then we're, after that we focus on that, guess what we're going to focus on? Jesus. We're a church. We're a biblical church. That's where we're going to keep our attention. And Jesus will answer all those questions. And his word will guide us. And, and unity will come as we walk with Jesus because he has power to transform. I look at every other effort to bring unity in our world, and I don't see it working. But I've, I've seen Jesus bring unity in the most broken places. So here's a question. How can we pray for unity and model harmony so the world will see Jesus? We've got to pray for unity, and we have to model it model harmony with other people, then the world will see. Who are you divided with right now? Who are you like this with? Who are you? I'm not calling them. I'm not talking to them. I've had enough of them. If it's a brother or sister in Christ, can I challenge you to do all you can to bring unity? If you've done everything you can and this, the other person won't reconcile, then just say to them, I'll keep the door open. My heart's open. But you never slam the door if you're a follower of Jesus. You say, when you're ready, I'm here. And I'll do my part as best I can. We need to, if we can model that kind of unity as Christians, if the world looks on and watches Christians constantly bickering and fighting, fighting, do they see the presence of Jesus? Is there any hope in that? No. We've got to live out and model unity. And so do all you can to establish that. If you have somebody you're at odds with, sort it out. How can we pray and partner in this adventure of, of seeing lost sheep come home to Jesus, the good shepherd? Here's the third thing. Pray that lost sheep will know that there is a good shepherd who loves them beyond description. Do your friends, do your family members that don't know Jesus, do they know the greatness of the love of God? We can share that. We can declare that. We can model that. So Jesus continues his prayer. Halfway through John 17, verse 23. Then the world will know, I love this, then the world will know, Jesus prays, that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Do you hear Jesus' prayer? He's praying that the world will know that the God who made them and who loves them, loves them like he loves his own son, Jesus. Do your friends, do your neighbors know the greatness of God's love? And if they're going to see it, can I tell you where they're going to see it first? They're going to see it in you and how you love them. I saw Jesus and encountered the love of Jesus before I ever saw Jesus. Because my sister Gretchen had met Jesus and she was changed. And I was this, I was this just this hostile, angry kid. And when she became a Christian, she started loving me and she wouldn't fight back. She was kind of like my Gandhi, you know. <laughs> I, I was just vicious. And she just kept loving me. And I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus through Doug Drainville and, and Glenn Perry, these two college guys that just were part of this church youth group that just loved and served like a bunch of the young people in our church did, did with our middle school and high school kids when they went and gave a whole week of their vacation time to go to camp with them and pour into the lives of some of your kids. I saw Jesus before I ever saw Jesus. We need to do that. We show the love of Jesus and how we love people and we reveal that he's here, he's around, he's present, he's moving. What will draw people to Jesus? And what will really draw them to Jesus? Maybe, maybe we can scare people to Jesus, threaten them with some things, right? No. I don't think that draws people to Jesus. How about anger? How about judgment? We can just judge people for all the wrong things they're doing. No, I don't think that draws people to Jesus. I love Romans 2.4. Romans 2.4 says this. It's 
your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. It's the kindness of God. He knows everything about you and me and every lost sheep. And he gave his life and he never stopped loving and he never will till the very end. Now that fourth part in the gospel, go, go, our response. People have to decide if they're going to receive that gift. We can't, Jesus doesn't force people, we can't force people. But his love is overwhelming and we need to share it. So a question. How can you pray and behave in ways that show the staggering love of God for rebellious, God-hating, Christian-bashing people and for really sweet people who have no time for Jesus? <laughs> right? There's all kinds of lost sheep. Some are hostile and angry. That's what I was like. Some are really sweet and kind, but they just aren't interested. How do you pray for them? You pray like Jesus did. How do you love them? You love like Jesus did. And you keep loving, and you keep loving, and you keep loving. How can we pray and partner in the adventure? Number four, we learn this from Jesus in verse 24. Praying that people will know that God longs to spend forever with them in his glorious presence. Have you ever told somebody who doesn't know Jesus, I just want you to know that God wants you to be with him forever in heaven, and I would love to see you forever in heaven as well. John 14, 24, we read these words. It's the prayer of Jesus. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. Do you hear the heart of Jesus? He says, Father, I want these lost sheep to be with me where I am, to be with me in heaven, to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Have you told people that God wants them to be in heaven someday and that so do you? I think each one of my siblings and myself at some point with my dad before he became a Christian at some point said to my dad, Dad, we want so much for you to be in heaven one day. We want to be with you forever. As much as you might desire that for someone, Jesus wants it more. Do you hear his prayer? I want them to be with me where I am. To see my glory. That's the heart of Jesus. Jesus. For every lost sheep you know. And if you're still, if you're like, if you say, well, I'm not a Christian yet, that's the heart of Jesus for you. He longs for you to be with him forever. He's made a way through his death and resurrection. He offers it freely for anyone who will believe. How can we pray and partner in this adventure? How do we partner with the living God as Jesus prayed, as Jesus longed to partner to see lost sheep come home? Here's the fifth thing. We can make the Father known in what we say and what we do. We can make the glory of the Father known, the love of the Father known, the grace of the Father known. When we become more and more, this is why disciples are growing to be more like Jesus, because when we're more like Jesus, we can show him to the world. John 17, verses 25 and 26, Jesus continues praying. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Do you see what Jesus is praying? He said, Father, I want your love to be in these people who are wandering far from you. Some of them so bitter, so angry, hating God, hating Christians, hostile. And Jesus looks and says, I just want the love of the Father to fill their lives and I want them to be with me. That's the heart of Jesus. Jesus prayed for the glory of the Father. we got to pray that way. Jesus prayed for disciples, for us, and taught us how to pray for each other. But Jesus prayed for those who will come to him through our witness, through our lives, through our words, telling the simple story of Jesus, telling our stories about how he's changed our lives. And, and Jesus is praying for every lost sheep that's out there, and for every one of us, if you're a Christian, he's put you around a few lost sheep. I have six individuals and one couple that are on my prayer list every day who don't yet know Jesus. And I know that Jesus is the good shepherd and he died for them. And he longs for them to come to him. But by his grace, he's invited me to walk alongside of these people. They're part of my life. Family, friends, neighbors. And he's invited me to pray for them and to love them and just give them little glimpses through my own imperfections as best that I can try to show that Jesus is real and he loves them too. 
And if we will all enter into that, God will, will work in ways that are amazing and glorious beyond what we could do. So if you know Jesus, will you pray with him and live in a way that shows him to those lost sheep in your life? Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. After 40 years of praying for my dad, there were points I was like, man, this is never, he's just too hard-hearted. And yet God broke through. So continue on. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, and today you're saying, I, I didn't understand the depth of God's love for me and what he did to make a way for me to come home, and I want to come home to him today, I want to invite you to pray. If you know Jesus and you want to live more for him, I want to invite you to pray. Let's pray together. Lord, first I pray with all of my brothers and sisters here on our campus and at home right now that are listening. We pray, those of us who have come to the cross, we've received the grace of Jesus, we are now sheep who have been invited into the arms of the good shepherd. And every day, Jesus, we feel it, we love it, we're amazed at how you love us. And so we pray, Jesus, that we will feel that calling to partner with you Jesus, we can't save anyone. Jesus, we didn't die on the cross and rise again. But Jesus, we can partner with you. We can love like you loved. We can care like you cared. We can tell your story, that simple story of God's love and the reality of sin and our problem. And yet, God, your solution, you sent Jesus. And then the response, that by faith, to receive that gift. So Lord, for all of us who are Christians, who are your followers, we dare to say today, send us out every day with your love and your grace, living for you and speaking of you in ways that help other people see that you love them too. And even as you pray, Jesus, those who would come to faith through our witness, Lord, we make ourselves available. And if you're here today, online or in person, and you say, I've never yet received Jesus, but I believe this is the moment. I'm ready. I get, I get this picture of his love. I get this picture of his arms being wide open that he's, he, he loves me and he forgives me if I'll just ask him. And if that's you today, will you right now with absolute conviction in your heart, will you join in this prayer? Will you just say it quietly in your heart? Dear God Almighty, I come to you this day. I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all the answers but I put my trust in Jesus. I thank you, God, for loving me. I confess my wrongs to you, the thoughts I shouldn't have thought, the words I should not have spoken, the actions I shouldn't have done, the good things I was too lazy or bored to get involved in doing. I give you all my sins. Jesus, wash them away through your death on the cross. And Jesus, I take your hand right now. I accept your forgiveness, and I accept your leadership in my life. Will you lead me all the days of my life, and forever and ever. And Jesus, I would even dare to pray that you would use my life to invite other lost sheep to come home to you. And if you prayed that prayer, and if you're here on the campus, before you leave today, before you leave this campus, will you go right to the Connection Center through the lobby? My wife, Sherry, will be there. And she wants to give you a Bible and a Bible reading plan and just give you a a quick welcome. It'll be just kind of a hello and here you go. But she just wants to, and if you'll just say to her, hey, can I get a Bible? I prayed that prayer with Kevin today. We'll know that we can kind of encourage you to go forward and start growing in faith. And if you're online and you prayed that prayer for the first time today, if you'll text the number you see on the screen, just text the word faith, F-A-I-T-H. You put your faith in Jesus. Just text the word faith to that number and we will follow, we will get you a Bible and we will help you on a journey of starting to grow as you learn to walk with Jesus. And Lord Jesus, for all of us, we pray that this day we will not have just learned about your prayer life, which was powerful and beautiful, but that we may pray with greater glory to the Father, we may pray with greater passion and and concern for your church, your people all around the world, and we may pray with greater faith and anticipation for those who will come home to you and put their faith in you because we've followed you on mission 
And we've joined you in this amazing journey of sharing your love with lost sheep and inviting them to come home to their good shepherd. We pray this, Jesus, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Before I send you off with a word of blessing, I want to encourage you to take John 17. In the coming weeks, read, read through it a few more times. Let this shape your prayer life. Because God is hearing your prayers, but it'll take you to a deeper place in your prayer life. Just a couple things before I send you off with a word of blessing. One is, if you want to grow in prayer, I shared this last week, but I honestly believe, and it's not just because my wife wrote the book, but the, the book, Praying with Eyes Wide Open, is one of the best pathways to making prayer a normal part of your whole life. So if you want a copy of that book, go to the Connection Center. If you can afford $10 and pay for it, that'll cover the cost of the book. If you can't, just take a copy. And we'll make sure that we get that taken care of. But we want to make sure if you want to go in prayer and you're going to take that book, if you're going to read it and use it, get one before you leave today. And, we, and if we run out, we'll make sure we get some more. But we want to make sure we're continuing this journey of growth together in prayer. Also, if you're new at Shoreline, if you're on our campus, we welcome you. We're so glad you're here. If you're in the family worship venue and the worship center, before you leave, just pop over through the connection, to the Connection Center through the lobby. They want to give you a little gift bag, answer your questions, and give you a warm personal welcome. If you're online, Will you please just text the word welcome to the number you see there and we want to reach out to you and build a bridge and do the best we can where you are to give you a warm personal welcome to Shoreline Church. And finally, if you want prayer, if you're on our campus right here, family worship venue over here and indoors here, or we got a team over here, we got two teams ready to pray for you, please, if you've got a joy or a need for you or someone you love, don't leave here without being prayed for. Join them for prayer. If you're online and you want prayer, you're going to see an email address. You can send us your prayers in, and we'll get it out to our whole prayer team. Or you can call the number there, and they will answer the phone, and someone will pray with you personally right now. I want to invite you to stand with me as we head out, and I want to send you off with a word of blessing. As you go from this place, go walking and living in the presence of the good shepherd, of Jesus knowing that you are a sheep of his pasture. If you've come home to him, invite others to come home too. Invite them with your words. Invite them with your acts of love. Invite them in how you serve them. Invite them in modeling unity in a broken world. Walk in his power, walk in his grace, and pray with deeper passion like Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll be back here next week. Same service times. Next week, July 4th, 9-11. God bless you. Have a great day.